Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden wants you to believe that his $2 trillion plan to combat climate change is a bold new agenda to save the planet. The onrushing climate crisis. Left unchecked, it is literally an existential threat to the health of our planet and to our very survival. In fact, it's the same worn out jobs program for Democratic Party interests that he's been pushing since he became a senator in the early 1970s. I see the steel that will be needed for those windmill platforms, towers and ladders. I see the ports that will come back to life, the longshoremen, the shipbuilders, the communities they support. Climate change is real, but it's not the end of the world. It's not even our most important environmental problem. Writer and activist Michael Schellenberger was named a hero of the environment by Time Magazine in 2008. His new book, Apocalypse Never, makes the case that the climate alarmism, which has become a central part of the Democratic Party's platform, is flat out wrong and counterproductive for both the environment and the economy. The two most important things anybody needs to know about climate change are that deaths from natural disasters have declined 90% over the last 100 years. They've declined 80% over the last 40 years, including in very poor countries. We should be celebrating this like every day, day of the week. Um, and then the other thing is that carbon emissions have peaked um, in rich countries. They're going to peak in poor countries in the next 10, 20 years, maybe most. A major problem of Biden's rehash of the Green New Deal is that renewable energy sources such as solar power simply can't scale to provide the electricity that modern society needs. So the problem with renewables is just it's just physics. Renewables are for um, you know pre-industrial subsistence farming societies. They're low energy density. It's wood, sunlight, water, wind. They're all very low energy density fuels or flows. Fossil fuels are much bigger increases in energy density. They're what allow us to have cities. Before Biden revealed his massively expensive green energy plan, he had already promised more than $6 trillion in new spending over the coming decade, paid for through a mix of borrowing and hikes in income and corporate taxes. This comes at a time when the COVID-19 lockdown and emergency spending will push the national debt above 100% of GDP by the end of 2020 and the federal government is running larger deficits than it did even at the height of the financial crisis. Schellenberger says that if politicians were really serious about combating global warming, they would get behind fracking and nuclear energy, which is both clean and practical. Biden doesn't mention nuclear power, though, because it won't create jobs for longshoremen and shipbuilders or fulfill any other progressive fantasy, such as his dream of a modern-day civilian climate core based on the New Deal's Civilian Conservation Corps. The problem that nuclear energy poses to Malthusians who want to control society and restrict growth and do all the things that we know what the people that call themselves environmentalists want to do, um, it's threatened by nuclear energy because nuclear energy means you have infinite energy, infinite fresh water, infinite fertilizer, and that means you have infinite food. So nuclear eliminates resource scarcity. When I think about climate change, the word I think of is jobs, good paying, union jobs. Joe Biden's clean energy plan might even help get him elected. But if passed as prologue, it won't create many jobs or help heal the planet. It'll just mean spending gobs of money we don't have in a massive giveaway to special interests.